with that. And, uh, so, oh yeah, it's definitely been interesting, man. I gotta tell you, it, it's been interesting. Um, it's, uh, but, uh, yeah, beyond the tinfoil hat, that I was, uh, hired by them to be the host, and I'm enjoying the hell out of it. That's cool. Beyond the tin foil hat, I had to remember how to spell tin, because, <laughs> uh, I'm from Kentucky, and, uh, we know how what to spell. Part, man? There's only one part, no, uh, the center of it, the, the, the dead center of, it's not the center, was, Lexington, Lexington. Well, okay, first you of all, you're in Bowling Lexington. Green, Kentucky, by, by Bowling the way. Green, I was just in Bowling Green last you're weekend. in Bowling Green. Oh. Yeah. I was there last weekend, uh, great show, great people, um. No, huh, so Ken, where are you? Um, I am. Aren't you in Bowling Green? Bowling Green, Kentucky. Ken, you put a Ken to my damn show, man. What the fuck, Ken? What the hell, dude? What the fuck, Ken? I didn't know about it. I love love the White Squirrel Brewery. Uh, I'm a fan. Uh, I didn't know about your show. Uh, When was your show? It was this past Saturday. I totally could have gone. I went. Let's let's talk about this real quick because I got to ask you something. I I didn't even know about it. What the hell? I didn't even know. I've been in I've been in cities all over this great land, and I have never had this happen before in my entire life. <laughs> in Bowling Green, Kentucky, right outside our hotel, uh, it was a Waffle House. Yes, there yeah. is. Oh yeah, fuck I swear yeah! Where to God? Two red lights down the road. <laughs> another Waffle House. Fuck yeah! Yeah. Now. I've never seen that before. It's you gotta have like, two, baby. That, that's magic. <laughs> they only come yeah, in but... twos. They're like the Sith. <laughs> there, there's a good oh, one and a bad one. The Waffle House. There's Dude. a good one and a bad one. It's, there's it's, the one you want to go. Uh, I I don't know. It's been that both of those Waffle Houses have been there for mm. since I can before I can remember. Uh, and it was it was funny. There there's definitely good and bad. There's no story to my knowledge. Uh, we used to bypass both to go to the Denny's uh, late at night. Oh, so you, you're class. <laughs> this is class. <laughs> we went, but as you can see, there's no Denny's anymore. So there's right. there's only Waffle House. Denny's is out. Denny's is out. Denny's Waffle is House out. Is only Waffle House. Uh, Waffle, Waffle House, House is Bill's favorite restaurant. It's not my favorite restaurant. He he has he has told me so many times. Let's go to the Waffle House, and I'm like, fuck you. It's because there were two Waffle House. There's too much. Too much. <laughs> so did, did you go, go to the Waffle? House? No, I didn't. I did not go. We we went. We went the uh, we went to the Cracker Barrel. Okay, okay, that's right. Where we went to. <laughs> that's okay. The next day, but okay. uh, everybody, I gotta be honest, man. Everybody was super nice. In yeah. Bowling Green. Yeah, you know uh, everybody. So I, and I, and Lexington. You know, you're from Lexington. I love that town. You know, I you was love um, it. New Year's Eve. I was mm. at the Manchester. You know, the okay, Manchester yeah. hotel, yeah. very yeah, nice yeah. hotel, super nice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was there New Year's Eve. You know, doing a show. Uh huh. And um, I love Lexington, man. The, the cool thing. I'll, let me tell you guys about Kentucky. All the way up to you get to Louisville, and I'm not shitting on Louisville either. I love you people in Louisville. If you're around, I love you. You're awesome. Uh, but somehow kentucky has kept their this clean country feel to it even yeah. around in the city yeah you know what i'm saying oh yeah it's a it's a breath of fresh air brother you guys really do live in a beautiful place man well i don't live there oh well where are you at now i'm in i'm in the the if, if you could don't say it <laughs> what but what what part of the body do i live in ken uh, uh, of the, of the country or the I live in like the toe jam. Man. He's in I live in like no, and I have no. actually no. And he lives Woodley in the butt crack right. of America. I live, I live directly in <laughs> the thut of America. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in, I'm in, I'm in Los Angeles. Los Angeles. Yeah, nice. that's right. Uh, yeah. Florida. The uh, Florida. Yeah. Well, no, Florida. no, no. It's yeah, you know. Not to throw like shade at Los Angeles, but fuck. <laughs> Jesus I, I Christ. Like, Southern Cal, it's beautiful. Was was there last summer? It's a very beautiful place, though it really is. Yeah, Los Angeles. Living here is like a. Uh, it's like getting punched in the face. Uh, you know, it's a great place. Uh, don't talk about how bad it is. <laughs> Lexington's all right, man. Lexington's all right. Uh, Kentucky's fine. It's 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 incredibly beautiful. It's great. 
Louisville's fine. No problem with Louisville. Oh, it is. I love Louisville. I love it's fine. I really like, I like, I like Knoxville area. Uh, you can go, you can boat, you can go There's climb a, a tree, yeah. a lot of hiking. <laughs> the, the only, the only <laughs> thing that's trail. getting a little annoying, things getting mm. a little annoying in, in Knoxville is mm. uh, like Nashville has already became this, but everyone is yeah. moving here. Oh, for real. Oh, wow. And it's, I didn't think it would bother me before, but now it's kind of like, mm. God. No, you know, transplants and, are the worst. Yeah, I know. Absolutely. I am one. <laughs> That's awful. I mean, L.A. though is is totally used to this, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. you have other places in America that aren't. And right. uh, Tennessee was up, Tennessee was second behind Florida, but the most Jesus. people moved to it last year. Why is everybody moving to Tennessee? Just because of the water level or something? Like they think. No, it's a long time coming. coming. Not not to even go down this road, but if you mm -hmm. want yep. to talk, you know, say the truth, it's politics. Uh, mm -hmm. Tennessee, regardless of what your politics are, I don't give a damn. I don't care. We, we love politics. <laughs> but uh, yeah, love the more the better. Well, well Tennessee <laughs> is trying so like hell to be the most conservative state it possibly can be. So I think you have a lot of your California conservatives who uh, are leaving. They do exist. Yeah, they, they do exist. exist. Well, they they're all here, so uh, they've all moved here, and then um, you know that they're they're moving here. So so the uh, self righteous and, and well, conservative, great. I'm more, well, my thing is, I, I'm I'm more of an independent, down the middle guy, so I piss sure. everybody off. Uh, right. So, but yeah, I mean, you, I, that 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 does lead me to, uh, the, I think maybe the first question I have is, um, you do magic in the Bible Belt. Um, has anybody <laughs> attempted to, like, string you up to a tree, and call you a witch, well, offer see, burning? That's how you know. That's how a magician know that he's killed. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're like, dude, they love me. You know, they tried to burn me at the stake last night. Uh, you know, man, I've had over the years, I've ran into those weirdos that, you know, yeah. really can't differentiate, you know, reality from from fantasy. Yeah, they're uh, called religious people, but yeah. Exactly. Oh, yeah. It, th those people are there. I I'll tell you one of the, the, the funniest things, not funny, this was actually sad. Uh, years ago, I was doing a show and this lady came up to me afterwards. Mm. And she said, uh, sir, can, can I get you to hypnotize me? I've lost this jewelry in my home. And can, can you come over to my house and hypnotize me and help me find it? Huh. You know, and I was like, oh, lady, you please. You know, <laughs> what's that? Did you do I mean, it? <laughs> oh, well, yeah, of course. Uh, of course. The, uh, <laughs> but, um, you know, that's besides the point. But those, uh, those people are there, man. And absolutely... And then, you know, another thing, uh, it, when you look at the comedy side of it, this is something that's not talked about a lot either. But, you know, I call, you know, bullshit on this all the time is, you know, in the Bible Belt, a lot of people do get hung up on uh, language <laughs> and, and what you can say. And, and I, this is my theory, guys, and you can take this with you for the rest of your life. No, I love it. I, I love it. I love it. I'm, I God. think most of your clean comedians are serial killers. So I'm just oh, going to tell you, here's the thing. <laughs> Here's the thing, man. When you stump your toe, you say all oh, shucks. And no. You say shit. Then you're definitely damn it. you're definitely you're definitely wearing people like skin suits if you say oh, Exactly. So <laughs> so when you see that comic or that entertainer up on stage and they drop, they say shit or they uh. say damn it. You know, they're being authentic. They're being right. real. So you know, there's not a dirty comic or a clean comic. There, there's just comics, you know. And then you I don't got. Know. I've, 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 I've probably met a couple dirty comics in my time. It's, well, I mean, you know, some dirty I, people. I, there, there, there are some, but I mean, what I'm saying is, you know, so. But in the Bible Belt, you know, they judge you right off the bat if you say damn it, then they don't have a I problem, see. you know, with all the freak show that's going on in their bedroom behind closed doors. You know what I mean? Yeah. A lot of hypocrites. That's what's what I'm the, saying. Yeah. What's the yeah? What's that? That comedy club. In Salt Lake City, I've seen it's like the dry. Oh my God, you're talking about the, the dry bar. Oh my God, I hate it. I hate it. Oh fuck! I them. will never be on dry bar, y'all. I will them. never be because first of all, I think you know, like, no offense, Mormons. All Drink right? some coke. But Drink yeah. some motherfucking coffee, motherfucker. Yeah. They fly them up no there. Coffee. The Mormons fly them up there. Set them in front of a studio audience, and then they do their bids. I've had friends that have been on dry bar. <clears throat> I never will be because you know I'm not. You like to curse. I'm not that clean. But uh, well, if you're able to do it, 
if you're able to be funny in that that dry bar, I guess that's that's great. It's just there there's it feels censored and coming from the bible belt actually fuck what i think about from your point of view being a comedian what do you think about maybe not the dry bar in and of itself yeah but like that censorship and comedy and such i I don't like it because here's the thing okay comedy no topic is off the table remember that okay now that doesn't mean though anyone can make a topic funny understand what mm, i'm saying like there's different skills to, to funny um there are certain comics out there that we have been blessed that can take any topic and make it funny but then there's a, a lot of comics who cannot do that and that's whenever they'll say something and you're like oh god you know that was mm. um so uh i i, I like, think like kramer from seinfeld oh exactly well you know yeah but he wasn't that joking was though. that's the problem that, that, yeah, that you know that was awful that guy no, he had no Michael. What's his name? First place. Michael Richardson. Um, I, Michael I, Richardson. I love the show. Don't get me wrong. I love the show okay. Seinfeld. Uh, I'm yeah. a big Larry David fan. But yeah, that was. I like Michael Richardson. However, yeah, 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 yeah. He, he failed. Oh, he didn't Definitely. handle that situation. He, he didn't handle that up. situation. You know. But uh, <laughs> right. yeah, man, for censorship, dude. It's not. I mean, and here's the thing. Also on the dry bar, I do want to clarify. Some really good friends of mine have done dry bar, who are very funny. Yeah. So, but, but now you don't not, talk to them because they, they did the dry bar show, right? What's that? Now you don't talk to them. Or <laughs> now, no, now they're canceled. Right. I never talk to them ever again. <laughs> ever. They're done. <laughs> done. You're out. Yeah, canceling can go both ways. <clears throat> right. Canceling spelled back anyway. <sighs> so you were in Bowling Green. Ken didn't see your show because you know he I didn't. didn't. Care. Uh, and <laughs> I, go I thought about going that night. I thought of, I thought about going. I actually went out. I went to a place called Donna's, and because they had they had a even worse. He was out. <laughs> oh my god! He's like, <laughs> I could have went, but I decided to go to the one of the two Waffle Houses in town. <laughs> you know why there's two Waffle Houses? Why is that? You need that many Waffle Houses in that t- the demand, baby. Listen. Yeah. Have you, you ever don't... seen Fistful of Dollars? <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> I was thinking the white trash level must be through the roof if they've got two. You're in Bowling Green, Kentucky. I've too. never been more afraid for my life. And I was there with like four of my best. Actually, it was three of my good guy friends. And we were there with a a, a woman. And, and of course, she she had to kind of pick a little fight with this dude. And I, I tell you, he's like the countryest, jacked, person he's like that guy from um letter kenny you know just full on but he was like wasted out of his mind and i don't know what she did to him or said to him but he he like came up to our table and put his hands on our table and looked at all three of us and he's like you got a problem with me and people are like oh my god we're gonna die <laughs> she start so, so so the the lady you were with pro- yeah she started office? some stuff uh i i don't know why she was kind of crazy she was she's she drunk uh, or just okay well that's how it always happens and i'm telling this she now drunk but she was crazy <laughs> it's always it I, I love females i do but i'm gonna tell you <laughs> i'm gonna tell you most men were not as violent as as, as they portray us okay most of the time we get along it's peaceful and then some crazy lady some crazy female comes up in there and then we've got to fight we don't even want to fight no, no. <laughs> and they will fight you in bowling green they will fight fight bowling green is yeah, like they'll fight you yeah they'll fight you. <laughs> they will fight and i fight like this you. this is my fighting style <laughs> you know what was interesting this has never happened before and it happened in bowling green uh. three pregnant women in the audience yeah, all around six months pregnant. Have I've never had that happen to us sh- in a show. I mean, it all was so. I, 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 I know what you guys are doing in Bowling Green, and at the Waffle House. At that, <laughs> they went to the Waffle House afterwards. Waffle House is amazing. Um, for anyone who doesn't know about the Waffle House, it's because uh, out here they don't have Waffle Houses. Okay. No, they to don't. My, to my chagrin, I don't. I don't like it. But you guys uh, have instead, the best Mexican, 
you know, it will ruin you when, when you when you go out to Los Angeles or mm. anywhere in San Diego. The Mexican mm. food is just another level. Oh, it's on point. Yeah. It's, well, yeah, uh, yeah. I'm I'm living up in in the valley, uh, and like that's 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 all there is, and it's yeah. it's glorious. It's glorious. Oh my God, dude. And I and I, I speak zero Spanish. <laughs> you know, and now the, I'm kind of excited about this. Um, you know, I like In and Out Burger. Okay. Now I, I like the burgers. I'll, I'll be honest with you, the fries. It's kind of like, what the hell are you guys doing with? What? We like, mm. you guys gave up on the fries. But the the yeah. burger, I really dug the burger, man. And uh, I'm excited <laughs> that mm. in Nashville, Franklin mm. area of Nashville, Tennessee, oh, we're we'll getting the Uh-oh. first In and Out burger Uh-oh. outside of Cali, baby. All right, so check this out. So, first of all, I don't give a fuck, right? <laughs> like, like I don't, I don't give a shit. But of course, I went to the In and Out Burger. Why the Big Lebowski? You know, absolutely you know, alien. Yeah. That's, that's why you. That's why you go. Uh, and when I, when I, when my brother and I drove through Texas uh, to get here, because we decided to go to Texas, I asked my buddy, uh, a guy named Trey. I was like, Trey, we're in East Texas. He said, Get out. Where should we oh. eat? He said, He said, Of course, you go to the Whataburger. Now, sir, have you heard of the Whataburger? Yeah. I know you have. Yes, I have. Yes, I am. Yeah. Litmus test time. In and out. Or Whataburger. Dude, I gotta be honest with you. Okay. Be careful. Texas has a great comedy scene. <laughs> they, they do, they do. Texas is a great place. <laughs> Texas is a great place. But I think I prefer In and Out. Now here's oh. we just but here, here here's the thing, here's the thing. We, now I like In and Out's burgers. Yeah. I like Whataburger's fries. I like their I fries much better. And that spicy ketchup, dude, you can't go wrong. Spicy ketchup rolls. Well, here's the thing with Whataburger. So we 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 went to Whataburger. <clears throat> what a burger. And I was like, you're like, what do you want? I was like, I guess, fucking burger. So the lady hands me the two cheeseburgers on the tray, and you know, I being who I am, I grab the tray and drop it. Why? Because those motherfuckers are like two pounds a piece. Oh, they're huge. Like, dude. They're huge. In and out has these tiny pussy ass fucking burgers. They're delicious. They are they're good. Delicious. But well, you know what's? It's yeah. also funny. We uh, coming through Bowling Green, Nashville, coming back home, we stopped at Whataburger. Mm. Yeah, okay. So I do, I do like Whataburger. Mm. Uh, the the only thing I don't like about the burgers, and I guess I could request this, but the the mustard on the burger. I don't think they'll they'll oblige. Texas is not good at obliging. Actually, they're not. They're gonna, Texas they're gonna not give good. you exactly what what <laughs> they want you to have. <laughs> Some of the best barbecue, though, also in Texas. There's a okay. lot of good stuff in Texas. Uh, I, I I like Astro Burger. Uh, it's probably one of my favorite burger you places. Know, I've not had that. What's an Astro? It's a it's it's in L.A. It's a burger spot, burger chain. Oh. Like and there's also a place in L.A. that's great uh, called Good Stuff that is really uh, incredible. I really haven't been anywhere. I, I anyway. Why are we talking about me? We're talking uh, about comedy. food on the Geeky Gamer Podcast. <laughs> yeah, comedy, food is important. Um, Without food. food, you can't game. So I'm, <laughs> you cannot I'm, game. I'm really interested in comedy. Uh, what do you think about Kill Tony? I love watching it. It's it's entertaining as hell watching it. Uh, uh, as people don't, know, a lot of people don't know about it. Would you tell us a little bit about it? Well, basically, you know, it's a, uh, it, it's kind of like a, uh, you've been to an open mic, mm. you know, and, and 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 it's like the best kind of open mic because you know it's dictated by the audience. You know, they and, and you got guys, comics that'll come in there. A lot of new comics will come on for the first time, and uh, you know they're they're kind of rated and judged by a panel. You got you know Tony Hithcliff and uh, you know you sometimes see Joe Rogan on there. You, you know yeah. several guys and all uh, of his friends. I'm green. And, yeah, yeah, the whole Joe Rogan click. So and but there's been some great comics, some great mm. n- you know super talent that's popped up there. That you know it's gonna be exciting to see what you know you know how they evolve now have you ever thought about going on <laughs> not really you know i like to watch it but uh kind of like it, it, where i'm at right now mm. you mm. know I, I don't think it would you know you know it wouldn't help 
wouldn't help exactly yeah yeah, yeah. you know i'm kind of just uh kind of take advantage of, of the way things are and you kind of get to a point to where you just you know i'm going to do my thing i'm going to put my stain on the universe and then you know go out like that you know well, well but, i mean us. i think for people starting out mm. austin is the place you got to be yeah tell tell us how did you start in comedy and magic and the whole whole spiel well with me um I, I first got into, uh, you know, I kind of got into magic as a late bloomer for most magicians. Most magicians get like the magic kit as they're a kid, you mm. know, and they, they, they go on from there. Um, I was probably, you know, my early 20s, and um, I, I rolled into a brick-and-mortar magic shop. The magician fooled me, and I was like, God, I, I got to learn this stuff. So, you know, he threw a book at me, and then it was, you know, off to the races from there. Um, after a you know probably a few years of studying a lot of close-up magic because that's where you know most magicians all begin a lot of close-up card tricks now, what, point what tricks. do you what do you mean oh, card tricks, tricks point tricks uh, a lot of stuff like that and, and then you kind of get the nerve and uh, I discovered uh, busking street performing yeah yeah okay so um I uh, I set out and I would do some street shows and that's where I learned so much yeah I mean Ken's in, in the busking uh, he, oh, is he, he goes out yeah, he's he's a he's a musician. Uh, he does the voice <laughs> music. I don't. He, gets a, he 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 does impromptu dance on the street sometimes. Nice. Well, I've seen a lot of a lot of group yes. <laughs> the cool thing about busking, though, man, is it teaches you how to be engaging with an audience uh, because if they don't yeah. like you, man, they can just leave. Yep. You know. Mm -hmm. So so when a busker has to, you have to get the people to watch your show, then pay you afterwards. Mm -hmm. so oh shit! You, right. Yeah. Right. I mean. You're out there working for tips. So, yeah, uh, yeah I did that. And then I uh, discovered, uh, you know, let, let's try stand up. Went to the local comedy club. Um, in hit Tennessee? The open mic. Yes, in Knoxville. In Knoxville. Okay. And uh, hit the uh, the open mic there and um, showed up as the magician, did the magic show at first. But then I realized um, soon that uh, you can't learn. Sorry about that. You can't learn uh, stand up by doing magic or by playing a guitar or, mm -hmm. uh, you know, molesting a puppet. Um, there's uh, <laughs> there's the only way that you can truly learn stand up is by setting up there, bearing your soul, and 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 telling your shitty jokes. Hmm. Um, you have so that jokes. That. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I did that for about two years with no magic, just doing stand up, learning the craft, and then I was able to eventually to meld the two together and make them work, which is not easy, by the way, because a good magic is bullshit and good comedy mm. is telling the truth. It sounds like uh, it. It sounds those two years you were quote unquote learning the craft. Are you saying that you were bombing? <laughs> oh, well, of what course. Was going dude. <laughs> Well, you, you got to bomb thing. before you got to fail before you can succeed. Absolutely. <laughs> Here's I mean, the reason. This is the thing about comics, okay? This is why you're going to meet some of the most humbled human beings on the planet. Is because mm. a comic, unlike most people, and nothing against people who are not comics, but you don't mm. understand this until you've been truly humbled. Uh, comedians have been. Mm. Uh, you know, most people don't have self awareness. Most people don't step outside of their own body and take a look at everything that's wrong with them. Mm -hmm. and and uh find the funny in it um but uh yeah yeah i bombed i, I you know I, and it was even more difficult because um i remember the first show I ever bombed on was called mm. the uh the, the the giggle before you gobble it was a what? freaking br yeah it was, it was, it's, it was it's, a Thanksgiving. I, I feel like they set the bar pretty low on that. <laughs> it was it was awful dude it was it was thanksgiving it was the night before thanksgiving and it's what we call a bringer show in comedy okay a bringer, bringer show. shows or or means every comic's supposed to bring like family members so we have uh, a packed out house yeah know? i had a band i know what that is <laughs> the there, there was like 11 of us on this show and um i was number 11 and i thought i'm headlining baby i'm gonna uh -oh. kill you know, oh, no. so yeah, I, I go up there. And Everybody was gone. I ate a bag of balls. It was, yeah. it was awful. <laughs> and uh, dude, it, 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 even the crickets, you could hear the crickets getting up and leaving. They were like, fuck this. The, um, oh, I, it wasn't like a band show where like, you know, you brought your friends to your show and like you're playing last. Everybody like has a great time, enjoys their set. The band gets off the stage, crowd like 
splits. Oh, you have those too. I mean, yeah, those, <laughs> those things happen too all the time. You're like, it's my turn, and no one's there. Uh, <laughs> Gone. You know, <clears throat> or just gets smaller, smaller each 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 comic that leaves. There's less. But so the, so the, what happened in this bomb? Well, I'm sitting there telling my jokes, and you know, I'm getting nothing. I'm bombing. And in the back of my mind, when my mind, I'm thinking, you know, I can entertain you people. I can just reach in my back pocket and grab a deck of cards or something. But I knew if I did that, mm. I wouldn't learn anything. Sure. You know, I wouldn't. So I just had to sit up there and and, and eat it, man. And, yep. you know, there's that that whole walk of shame, you know, where you, where you have people coming up to the, the comics that did well. And they're like, oh, man, you're so funny. And they just overpass you. as <laughs> And, uh, they walk it's, it's, past you. It's horrible. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that ride home. I'll never forget that ride home. But anyways, uh, yeah, man, you, you have well, how'd to How'd you deal with that? How'd you deal with that, though? Because I won't lie, like, you know, I uh, deal with the existential crisis, as do we all. The, the, the horrible spiral of, you know, looking into the black and the black looks back at you. You know, I, I, I know what that is. Something like that could has the potential to send me to catapult me nay to trebuchet me into a bad so how did oh, you do it, i mean it definitely can you know there's people who i've seen people get up there and they, they bombed and you never heard from them ever again they're gone you know, what happened what happened to that guy you know uh but then there's people i guess that are you know love the punishment you know they mm. come back and uh you know you, you come back you come back and and eventually you figure it out you know that's the thing with also you know people will try to say we'll try this or try that but it, realistically you just have you're, you're alone you got to figure it out yourself and, and, and an what experience works for you. yeah an experience skill how'd you get up the first time i mean yeah. that's a lot of people's biggest fear um yeah. getting in front of an audience i don't like it I don't mind like radio. I'm fine with uh, what we're doing is is fine because there's nobody watching, and <laughs> even if there were a lot of people, they you know I I don't see well, them well, directly in front of me. Well, it doesn't matter. Doing is, is not I dictated people, by them laughing. You know yeah. what what I tell people is um, get over yourself. Oh, it, oh, it's shit. that simple, bro. <laughs> it's that simple. You're not you're not that special. What? Uh -oh. I mean, so I love it. When you get up on, when you get up there, you know people. You, <laughs> really? No, dude. No one gives a shit. No one cares. So, but I mean, but people can't get that out of their head. You know, like you've heard the saying, uh, you know, imagine your audience naked. Well, I tell you why that doesn't work because then I feel like everyone's staring at my erection. So <laughs> I can't. It doesn't work. Yeah, uh, but no, seriously, if if you just get over yourself, you're you, it the, in you know you, you you do a lot better than what you realize it seems like there should be a caveat here though so for example uh if i wanted to get on stage um but i don't have any material i dated a girl once once you know and then and then i was over girls uh <laughs> she's this french chick and it was an open mic thing and they were like hey we're all out of comics uh does anyone want to come up on stage and just try it out for a few minutes? So she's on stage for like 15 fucking minutes. <laughs> Why? Because at first, it's hilarious. She's French. She's like, ah, you know, I am French. Okay. And she does the whole accent thing. And she's hilarious because it's just funny. But then you realize she's got nothing to back it up. Yeah. And it's awful for like eight and a half minutes until the dude has to like coat hanger her off. And she's my girlfriend. I'm like, fuck. So if you don't have material there's, right there's something there's some, first of all there's something to be said about any type of uh british accent or european accent in america uh. that they what even they have to say may not even be funny but we'll laugh at it because of the accent now mm. if i when i'm out west my accent works oh, sure. for me to, to an advantage sure, or sure, up sure. north if i'm far up north it works to my advantage you know yeah, yeah. um so uh that, that blue but yeah, color you, you got to have material. Ron White, maybe. I mean, yeah, you, you got to have material. And, the, um, you know, when people can get up and you can talk shit for only so long, but that stops after a minute. Right. And, um, you know, the the older I've gotten, the easier I find it is to, to write material, new material. Mm. And um, it's because uh, here's the thing, man. 
you know, a, a comic all the time, 24 seven comics are, they're looking around for material. Everything is material to a comic. So th there's times I've heard things happen to, to, to friends of mine and I'm jealous. You know, I'm like, Son of <laughs> I wish that would have happened to me, you know? Um, so, and, and you think of it, the older you are, the longer you're here, the more crap you've experienced, you know? Um, mm -hmm. I'm not saying that there's no funny 22 year old comics. I'm not saying that at all, but I think it's a little more difficult for a 22 year old to have really great, an hour special, you know, when they, you know, you've been in a, you know, you hadn't been here that long. So it's interesting. That's interesting. Well, I mean, and, and I don't want to, this is going to derail it. Why do I even have a disclaimer? Um, I think about like Dave Chappelle, who, you know, back in Chappelle show style, I really like Chappelle show. Of course, everybody liked Chappelle show, but he's, in my opinion, far superior now. Oh yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And he's got this whole, his whole vibe is almost as though he's really just giving advice and it happens to have jokes in it. Absolutely. Whereas beforehand, you know, when he's on like the, the talk shows and Letterman and whatnot, I think he was on Letterman. Uh, I'd be shocked if he didn't get on Letterman. He was in the 90s. And, yeah. you know, it was much more about bits and, and, and actual just jokes and jokes and jokes and sort of a personality. And then after he gets back into stand up, it's, it's not about that anymore. I struggled with that for a while, actually. Uh, like wanting Dave Chappelle to be not jacked <laughs> and and not having smoked a lot of cigarettes. It's interesting about experience. Hmm. But you know, so, yeah, he, go on. Well, he had that time off. He had a lot of time off. And now, first of all, we live. We also we live in a time that um, that comics are coming out with hour specials about mm -hmm. every six months. It feels like you know sure, what I mean. Sure. Um, a lot. Which. It, to, to be honest with you guys, that's very unrealistic to be able to keep cranking out quality hours one right after the other. Well, they um, don't. They don't. Exactly. Bingo. They 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 don't. They they will be that one quality hour, <laughs> and then if you noticed, you've went. You're like, oh, I enjoyed that guy. Let's go watch this one. What's well, not as good as the other one? And then the other mm. one's not as good mm. as that one. It's because it's it's very difficult. You know, when you look back in the day of prior. And Carlin that sure, was cranking sure. out these special that shows you how special those guys were mm, you know those mm. guys were really were on this other level so when I look at Dave I think Dave is on that level of, of those guys I really do um he not like I said he had a lot of time off to do a lot of writing and a lot of stuff but I mean the way he structured those specials oh man genius you know just really absolutely good. genius really good. Ken, did you have any questions? I'm sorry. Oh, no, I, I I enjoyed Chappelle's. Uh, I I appreciated. Uh, I get a little flack on this program for being the uh, the more liberal of the two of us. And I I thought what he said was great. I mean, I think we need to speak up and say 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 things that we're thinking about if we can't communicate. Uh, and so one of my shticks is like using uh, canceled you know as, as a liberal i think that's funny because i'm not i'm, I'm not canceling people I'm, I'm doing the opposite and and want to be canceled for saying my views uh which are <laughs> he's <laughs> the sort of the goal in life goal in life uh but you know I'll, I'll use snowflake i'll use all the the terms and and i I think what was refreshing and the same with John Stewart's some of the stuff he says is you know it's funny when you can call out both sides for everything because you're not limiting yourself and you're not like any time that you don't fall in line with whatever other people are saying uh, you're going to piss some people off and that's great Absolutely. You go for it <laughs> um yeah, yeah. I'm just, okay. I, I, well, well, you know, you've got, first of all, so so you're more the conservative, you're more the liberal, which I love the fact that you guys can do a show together that's amazing and, and be friends. I love that, you know, because I've got conservative friends, I've got liberal friends, um, and, you know, like I said, there, there's a lot of things I'm very liberal on, and there's things I'm conservative on. Well, exactly. Um, that's what it is. 
So it's well, just, you welcome know. to Kentucky. Welcome to Tennessee. I mean, <laughs> yeah, who, yeah. like how 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 are you going to do that? Just <laughs> schizophrenic weather <laughs> and everything. But, you know, there's moments. One thing with me is, uh, you know, I'm a big supporter of. Uh, and here's the thing: I'm a big supporter of the LGBTQ. I've got a gay son, and yeah. he was born gay. You know, I'm not gay, but my sperm is gay as hell. You ordered a game. <laughs> Congratulations. Oh, you know, he came shooting out, you know, you know, it was like a Skittles commercial. He um <laughs> Hey, I understand. But uh exact but I love I love him. I love him, you know, and went change a hair on his head. Uh so I'm 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 a big supporter there. But at the same time, I do have some opinions about I, I get annoyed the way they try to lump sexuality and gender and everything in the same bucket. And it's absolutely not, you know. Uh you know, I, I, I believe heterosexual it's, buckets. I understand. Well, I mean, you know, it's it's just you know, they try to lump everything in the same group. You know, so it's it's uh it's and it's not. You know, you can't label, you can't slap one label for everything. Everything has gray area. Gray, gray. Yeah. There's a gray area in everything. Yeah. Everything. But I, so, that's my big con issue with conservatism hmm. wow. is that you know, you, I, I thought it was supposed to be the group that like hands off. You know let us do whatever we want yeah that that, that is the, the the big and and not to go there but but i i think i think the not to go there you are going there go there <laughs> go anyway, there for I... it what's interesting uh well you know i i, I know you, you guys probably haven't heard about this but you know tennessee like i said is tr okay first of all you know how like far left uh, Oregon, Washington State is in that area. That part of the country is extremely. It depends on who you talk to. Depends on oh. who you talk to. <laughs> it's general. also the state where they, you know, they took over a park area with guns and. Well, that that, that that happened too. That did happen too. <laughs> sure. the, uh, but Tennessee is like the opposite of that in Conservativeville is what they're trying to do and. Like right now, they're trying to pass this law of uh, the anti-abortion law to where um, an adult cannot aid a minor across the border to get an abortion. That's now, nice. okay, I get it. You're trying to protect in 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 the paper form. You're trying to protect that minor. What if that minor is being molested by her father? What if she was raped by a fa you know what I mean by her guardian? You know. I mean, that requires thinking, Danny. Um, absolutely. So that's my point: is the, the, it's gray area. You know, there's not, there's no black and white issue with anything out there. But there are black and white issues. Is is the thing uh, when you're dealing with ideologues, okay? And the thing, you know what I'm saying. I'm preaching to the uh, choir here. I'm pretty sure. But the idea of if I have this this stipulation, right? If I have a code, if I say, okay, well. I believe this thing is the absolute whatever. Ergo, I am a Sith, right? Because only the Sith deal in absolutes. Uh, then my rationale goes out the window and I am able then, because of my ideology, to commit or allow acts that are awful to be committed. Despite myself. This is a Christopher Hitchinson thing. Yes. Um, that 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 entire idea of good people allowing very bad shit to occur despite themselves because they have this yeah but what if and that's the thing like like you gotta think i mean all the stuff you just said so they're gonna penalize you're saying right i, I don't know oh, it's yeah. law they're gonna they're gonna penalize adults for aiding quote unquote Miners across the border. Why are conservatives all about the border? Oh, Why is it on the border? It's, that's a lot. You know, that's a lot. Thing, on the border, I mean, I let <laughs> we. That's something. That's a whole other topic. But <laughs> that's yeah, a we, lot. we need a wall between Kentucky and Tennessee. I, <laughs> Build um, the wall. Yeah. My my um my family we grew tobacco, uh, and uh, you know my grandfather is kind of famous for um bringing alcohol to bowling green kentucky that was his his claim to fame is it was a dry area <laughs> and he lobbied in the 50s to bring alcohol to this area uh so my first experience with migrants was when i was bourbon. very young uh drinking bourbon on the tobacco farm and we you know i don't if if you know farmers 
who are typically very conservative, you know, there are a lot of benefits we get from this, but it's, it's, it's such a weird place to be. Uh, Cause you gotta, you gotta frighten people. That's the point of, of the border. You have to be frightened. And I think there should absolutely be security. There are too many people that want to about- wage war on America. <laughs> Are we talking about at Kentucky any given Kentucky? second? <laughs> no, in in America, in Kentucky, the Canadian border. Going I know, farm. I know. Those motherfuckers. The Canadians, it. they're just they're they're bitter, bitter God, people. Damn. It's the cold. It's the great terrible white north. I have to deal with them Square. constantly. I, 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 what, I, on, on the podcast <laughs> Beyond the Temple Hat, it, I deal with two Canadians. So I think know. if I'm going to be racist, it's going to be I against hope Canada. Watching. Fucking I hope Canadian. they're watching this. Canadia. <laughs> So tell us a little bit about um, the Beyond the Tinfoil Hat because it sounds, it sounds to me for some reason like coast to coast. I'm assuming Absolutely. it's not. It's, it's, oh, it is. It's very similar. Um, the uh, here's here, here's the thing I'll tell you too. Also, um, being a magician, mm. okay, magicians don't believe in anything fun. The majority of the magicians that you meet, you know, because of the history of Harry Houdini exposing mediums in his day. Uh, it set off this whole trend and also that we know the secrets we know how to trick people so we're not mm. easily duped kind of thing mm. um so uh i used to be one of those guys i didn't believe in anything fun i was an atheist you know the whole nine yards not saying every magician's an atheist but most of them don't believe in psychic phenomena or any of this stuff and um i met uh ryan stacy he's a paranormal investigator a private investigator uh from canada and um he just has a you know a resume this long you guys done a lot of stuff and um i had him on the abracadam podcast and he opened my mind to the ufo phenomena now i don't know if you guys follow it at all do you watch the y files okay 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 yeah that's a great podcast too that's a great podcast i I love love the way he approaches i love it i love the way he approaches it but uh, Ryan really opened my mind, and I got to looking and doing some, you know, studying, investigating my own. Mm. And uh, most of the time, the, the best uh, thing that I can come up with are, are the words, that's interesting. Now, granted, I wasn't there. I didn't witness it. That's the best I can ever go. Sometimes I do see stuff, and I'm like, well, that is total bullshit. You know, I could, you know, I could do that. I could fake that. Now, but anyways, um, since the mind's been opened, I've uh, started, you know, ho- a host of Beyond the Temple Hat. I've talked to some very interesting people, and uh, I've talked to some people that you know are way out there too. So, uh, but th- th- it's it's very interesting. Let me just say that. So, um, uh, Bill and I, we were we were talking, and I was in this very room that I'm in right now. Uh, oh, yeah, and it was that behind it was over his super right creepy. Shoulder? It was one one of uh, the creepiest things that happened in my life. Uh, my my grandfather, he his ashes are right there. I, I'm, I'm in his house. So I take care of my grandmother or help take care of my grandmother. Uh, she's 95 years old. But one of the first times we did this, we had an extraordinarily um, devil worshipy show. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and because we we run we, we we run a run a, a podcast on Mondays uh, called the Red Rit, and it's like yeah. a horror Cthulhu podcast. Film noir, type nice. film yeah. noir uh, definitely a detective, hard boiled detective meets uh, you know Squidward. Uh, but we have a there was a lamp like a chandelier that crashed down it was the loudest thing scared the shit out of me <laughs> and it was like the first thing i thought of it's it's my grandmother or grandfather like mad because i'm doing this podcast <laughs> in the world. Wait, you know what man I, th- th- here's the thing and not to get i don't want to get cheesy or anything here but i am a firm believer that your loved ones if you're aware if you keep your eyes and ears open and pay attention they mm-hmm. are with you um, based on my own experience, I'm a, I'm a big believer in that. Also, I wanted to say, uh, no offense to your grandparents' house, but I was like, my God, this guy is an interior designer to update his background. Cause it hasn't, like, it has not changed since 19, <laughs> I think, I think they I built this like, house in 1960. I feel, like 
feel like my dad is seven in in that background somewhere. That's how. It's true. I, it's your dad is seven in the background right here. That's, yeah, that's correct. But but no. I, first of all, dude, kudos for you for taking care of your grandmother, man. That's badass, brother. Uh, oh, thanks. The, uh, but um, yeah, the I mean team. stuff like that. Uh, you know, I, I I'm a total believer just based off my own experiences. You know. So, and sometimes even in my show I make fun of it a little bit because my wife's a big paranormal my wife's really into the paranormal investigating so I do make fun of it a little bit but at the end of the day dude I believe I, I do I, I believe 100% mm-hmm. every time I, I see a blue jay I, I think of my great grandmother uh, which is even weirder like that that her soul and and is in all of the blue jays that I see for some reason it's like checking in on me. Isn't it that weird that we what we do? It that? is so weird. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and I'm I'm about as atheist as you could get. <laughs> it's so weird. I mean, there's there's something weird about it, and like I said, I don't know you know what happens or or what the rule book is or any of these things, but I've talked to enough people, and I, like I said, I've had my own ex- personal experiences that something's going on. You know, there's oh, yeah. something. And, you know, one thing on the tinfoil hat uh, that we like to do, and I didn't like this at first, when I first, uh, disc- Ryan, Ryan believes that everything's connected somehow. All this, all this UFO is, and I was like, man, I don't like to mix my beans and my mashed potatoes, bro. I don't know about that. You know, I like to keep that, my crazies all separate. But uh, now, that I'm kind of seeing some of that, you know, on a conscious level, you know, it, it who knows, who knows, man. But uh, definitely, you guys need to check out some episodes because um, we've, we've got some really good ones coming out on the pipelines. Hell, I'd have uh, you guys on sometime. Tell, tell, I'm always down to tell some stories too. I love to hear some stories. I got, got a story. Wild. You want to hear a story? Yeah. Real quick? yeah, let's hear a story. I can tell it later too. All right, so I. By the way, Ken, uh, I sent you a message. I got a it. Secret, a secret message. Secret message. It. One of our people. <laughs> we'll be surprised if it happens. Anyway. Yeah. Okay. So, I used to live in a China for a while, nice. and <clears throat> when I went there, uh, I was fucking around, you know, bipping and bopping to different uh, different cities and such, and I wanted to hit up Beijing. I did not. I, I'd gone into Hong Kong and Shanghai and out west to Chengdu and all these different cities and such. And I went and saw the uh, Terracotta Warriors in Xi'an. And I was like, I need to hit up Beijing before I leave. Little did I know that I would actually get to Beijing, like find some best friends, date that French girl I was talking about, and stay for several years. But I didn't know that. Did not know that at the time. So. I book a flight. I get one of my Chinese friends to book the flight because it's all in Chinese. And I do not speak Chinese at this point. Hit up Beijing. Boom. Bam, bam, bam. On the flight. It's late as fuck. We're going to arrive at like midnight 30 or so, right? So it turns out in Beijing, at about 11, things shut down. This is 2010, so it was a little bit more conservative uh, for anyone who's listening from Beijing, where they actually go out now, but at the time they did not. Everything shuts down. There's nothing, no subway, no fucking Amtrak, no buses. Boom. Only taxis. So I get out, and I'm like, fuck, I don't even have a place to stay. I just need to find a hostel. I had this little card, right, for a hostel, and I was like, okay, it's all in Chinese. I'm assuming that's an address in Beijing. So I get a taxi. Boom. Shh. We go around. Taxi drops me off at this bus, uh, airport bus transport thing. I don't know what it, what they call it. Flyaway zone. You guys know what I'm talking about? Or like the airport yeah. will take you to a location um, and just kind of drop you off. Like you have to know where you're going. So I'm on this thing, on this bus with all my shit. I got my guitar, got my two fucking suitcases, all these Chinese people who know where they're going. It's all in Chinese. In Beijing, the accent sounds like a lawnmower. So it's like <laughs> that's that's how they sound. And they're like coming through the, you know, the PA and they're saying what street it is. I got no idea where I'm going. We're sitting there, we 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 make a stop. Sit there a little bit too long, and everyone whoo, turns and looks at me. And I'm like, 
this must be my stop. So I get up, grab my shit. They're like, oh yeah, this is your stop. You know, this is all sign language. I get out, boom, all right, bye. Bus is gone. I am in Beijing on like a lifted highway, these huge highways. It's all concrete jungle, high rises and everything in the middle of the city. No clue where I am. It's about 1 a.m. I look, there's a bus stop. This is where they've uh, let me off. Everything's dark. It's all in Chinese. No cars because everyone's asleep, right? This is for the Chinese traditional medicine healthy. You go to sleep before midnight. And I'm sitting there with all my shit and thinking, so what do I do? Like, oh shit, it's a hulker. It's a random hulker. He's gone. I'm thinking, what do I do? I hear, excuse me, hulker arrives. <laughs> Hi, hulker. Hi. Right. Hulker, What's hold the, on. Uh... I... Yeah, finish what? the... Yeah, finish I'm going to finish, finish the story real quick. We'll introduce you, Holger. So, I'm standing there on this platform, and I hear this, excuse me, perfect English. Okay? I turn, boom. There is a Chinese guy in a black suit. All right? He's got, like, the pencil uh, uh, tie, white shirt. He looks like Neo, but Chinese. No bags, nothing. He's just standing there. Now, granted, I may have not seen him. I looked. There was no one around. We're at an empty bus stop on a fucking highway. A high-rise highway. Boom, this guy. Excuse me. You look like you need help. And I was like, uh, yeah. Um, I don't know what to do. I need to get to this place. He says, oh, let me see that. The card. Um, he, he looks at it. He says, oh, yeah, you need a taxi. Turns, boom, a taxi comes over the hill, pulls up. I'm like, holy shit, there's a taxi. He says, hold on a second. Goes full Chinese on this dude. Okay, listen, it'll only cost you this many RMB. That's the people's money for people that don't know. The Chinese money, the RMB. Should cost you this much. This man will take you where you need to go. He helps me with my bags. All right, thanks. I get in the taxi. Now, I'm so shell-shocked, you know, I don't think about it. I get to the hostel get in everything's fine everything's cool and i'm thinking oh holy shit that was awesome fast forward about five years i'm in america and someone asked me they're like so when you were in china how'd you get around and i was like oh blah 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 you know whatever yeah there's this story when i went to beijing i'm an idiot i didn't know where to go and i retold the story and i was like what the fuck did i encounter so, take that as you may. Weird. <laughs> Very. Now, it's completely plausible that Absolutely. the dude was. Who knows? But when I thought about it, I was like, I, I cannot explain. And many times in my journeys, we'll call them, I, I cannot rightly explain why I got to the place. But I did. That Pierce. is great. Hey, Holker. Who are you, Holker? My name is Daniel Holker, and I am uh, a participant in their uh, games. And uh, occasionally, when I get the chance, I pop into uh, this podcast. Oh, cool. I, you know, I like gaming, by the way. it, it l Let me tell you this. Uh, I, Holker, this is Danny. Nice to meet you, Holker. Hello, Danny. Yeah, I'll be honest with you guys. So you guys play a lot of online stuff, right? Yeah, we play a role playing game. Yeah, okay. It's, uh, I was always it's not a video game. Oh, cool! A role playing game. So not a. Yeah. I was always a little worried about playing video games online. You know, mm, because yeah. most time when I play video games, it's to get away from people. Right. Yeah. And also, you know, like when you play online, I wasn't into some nine year old calling my mama a whore. So you know. <laughs> yeah. No, it's tough. That's a tough one. It's a tough one to roll with. But, yeah. uh, but do you guys do like a D and D type of thing? It's kind of uh, like D and D. We do one better than D and D. It's better. Okay, I love that dude. So, so I, I wrote a book. It's a tabletop role playing game called Dread Lore, and uh, if you want to know about it, it's dreadlore.com. That is the game they play. Okay, okay. 
I, I want to share something super geeky with you guys, okay? And, and this is back in the 80s, whenever uh, only people did any... The, the only game you ever heard of, like, role-playing game was D&D. &D, yeah, of course. Back in the 80s, because, of course. you know, it was killing people. Of course you know? it was. But, yeah, uh, satanic panic. So, uh, but me and uh, one of my dear friends, Marlon, uh, we um, were big wrestling fans in the 80s. Well, fuck yeah. I hard wrestling fans. And we created our own basically role playing D&D type wrestling. It was more or less him. But he, I mean, he figured out a score system. Just there was so much cool stuff that he came up with. And dude, it was fun as hell. Oh, you know, yeah. and uh, this was, uh, and that just opened me up to the those type of games that I've, you know, uh, and I, I mean, they may have been around some of like the Magic the Gathering, a lot of this stuff, you know, but um, I'm sure, but I guess there was a, when would you say the period was that those kind of games exploded? That it, 2015. Super, yeah. Super I would popular. say I would say when Critical Role uh, blew up. Um, yeah. Matt, Matt Mercer and, and all those guys with, uh, uh, what was it? Uh, oh, it was on Twitch. What's the fucking name? Shit. My, my, my brain is not, not working right now. It's not firing all four mighty, cylinders. The mighty nine. Hey, Geek, and Geek and Sundry. Geek and Sundry. Is, was, was oh yeah. Started. Yeah. I liked, I liked their, uh, I like the Geek and Sundry movies or they, they did an internet TV show. That was really wonderful. No, I'm it wasn't. I was so in love with that lady. It was, was it, uh, speaking, of, speaking of movies. Can can I give a can I give a shameless plug real do quick? It, please do it. Do it. Do uh, it. It's a video game. Okay, so um, there's a movie you guys need to go check out on Amazon Prime. Hell, I even think it's on Tubi. So go to Tubi. It's free there. Is uh, it W J H C A M? Yes. Yes. And, and, <laughs> and, <laughs> you know what the W J H C stands for? What is it? I have. I what what Jesus has Christ? I don't know. Jesus H Christ, absolutely. Oh, okay. yeah. oh yeah. <laughs> there you go. Come on, Kentucky. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but what it is, it's a movie that takes place in nineteen ninety nine and before uh Y two K. And oh, sure. uh nice. a smart ass DJ moves down to Tennessee from up north and the only place where he can get a, a gig at is at a Christian radio station. And in 1999, everybody is calling into the radio station thinking the rapture is going to come. Of course, you know, of course. the end yep. of the world. Because it did. Well, it turns out it the, the end of the world does happen, and the zombie apocalypse takes place. And uh, sure. anyways, I play the part in this movie as a uh, I'm a radio preacher, but I'm a I'm a I'm a faith healer. <laughs> and I'm obsessed. And you don't get raptured. <laughs> well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I'm obsessed with the video game street fighter 2 fuck yeah so whenever i heal people i Hadouken! yeah so i do. shoot invisible fireballs at them and they fall out and you know shake and shiver so uh but yeah <laughs> awesome. there's the good game there's a good game uh you know street <laughs> fighter 2 but uh yeah yeah it, i would it... go on go for it. yeah i would say that uh D, D and just tabletop role playing games in general i mean there were a lot of them that were burgeoning through the 90s, uh, but it became mainstream, I would say, with Critical Role. And Felicia Day is the lady you're talking about. She, um, at, I don't know if she wrote, but I believe she wrote this YouTube aristocracy style. Oh, so good. Uh, deal called The Guild. And it's about MMOGs bad. like Warcraft, World of Warcraft and stuff. Mm -hmm. Really, really good. That's kind of when, when it became cool quotes to be a D, &D person um yeah D, &D is cool uh it, it is you a know, very I heady think, game but you know i think on a creative level man i think it's amazing and it just kind of it you know there's there's so many cool things about it dude um if i would had you ever... more time, it's something i would you know i wouldn't mind getting into myself because i had so you want to play you want to play on one day. monday Play on what? On Monday night. Monday, I actually I I, I may be out of town. Not, not this Monday. Monday. Some no, we, a, we're covered. Some future Monday. 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 Monday, 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 Monday is when we play. Yeah, yeah, man. Let's we'll pop in a play. Do you, do you think? Do you think comedy? Like, do you think a group of friends is where you test out like your first comedy bits? Like, if you're surrounded by people you're comfortable with. 
you know, at home, do you think that would uh, be a great place to, you know, during a game where you're you're pretending to be some someone else? Do you think that's a good place for comedy? You can I don't possibly know do that. Weird. You know, th there's th first of all, comics know when other comics are doing that shit to them. You're like, you son uh... of a bitch, you're just not a bit, you know. But uh <laughs> right. But I mean for somebody who's interested maybe into to getting into that if you want to throw your bits out there. Now granted, your friends are going to think you're funny because they're your friends. Right. You know, um this is the thing if if you want to if you ever want to to get started in that see how you can relate to total strangers because mm. whenever people find something that they can relate to you with that's when they pay attention to you. You see what I'm saying? So, uh, I mean, maybe, I, I mean, you know, maybe if you get a, a, yeah, hell, I always say, dude, just go to an open mic, R write, write a few jokes down and hop up on open mic. And, uh, you know, if you eat a bag of balls, you eat a bag of balls, you know, who cares? You lived, you know, I, I, I definitely, uh, went to a number of, uh, second city, uh, open mic shows, uh, in my day and I never had the guts. I just, I couldn't. It was, it was Next like, time I didn't have Bowling material. Green. Next time I didn't I'm have bring, material. Come to the show. I'm going to bring you up and, and I, I, we'll let you do a solid. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, next time you're in Lexington, I mean, I, I live in both cities. Yeah, for right. sure. So, so Holker, what you have missed a couple things. I'm going to out Holker as I do. So Danny Holker oh, yeah. <laughs> in a past life did stand up comedy. Nice. Holker. What would you like? Would you like to uh, tell Danny what your bit was, or one of them, I should say? I uh, I would get on stage, and uh, Holker's always doing his bit, basically. <laughs> so okay. <laughs> The, the first one I did is I tried to try to solicit money to, to fund a movie. I thought it was a cool concept. This was back in 2012. I thought it would be cool if like Marty McFly went like it hit the wrong number and, and hit 2012 instead of 2015. And he ended up in 2012 and he was really, really broke because even though he had a lot of money that he tried to take with him, you know, inflation, right? right. And He's also an economist, by the way. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and I, I, th I thought it would be cool if, like, instead of doing stuff that he did in, like, the other movies, he started playing World of Warcraft. Well, yeah. I mean, everybody right. was. He was like, yeah, let's just, let's just play video games. And then he, like, he, he lost his character, but he realized that if he, he could set his flux capacitor to go back an hour, right, he might be able to stop that. He might be able to stop his character from dying in World of Warcraft. And he goes back, he logs on, and like his character and, and his current character, like they meet in the World of Warcraft, right? And they like tear a hole in the, the space time continuum of the World of Warcraft. And it propagates, just takes out all the backups, and, and they're like, there's no, there's no World of Warcraft. And he try he thinks at this point that he can defect to East Germany. It doesn't really work out. So Hoker would go <laughs> Hoker would go on stage. It's at the time. He would, he would, he would go on stage. Uh, and what there was once where he, he read Fifty Shades of Grey. Before the movie. What was it? Before right. It was Fifty Shades of Grey, but but you were also doing like a Rubik's Cube or something. Yeah, it was all it was the most awkward thing in the world and then it was it was amazing it was amazing and he stopped he stopped he quit he stopped doing it uh, the, the problem you know the problem with with that career choice is i was making so much money that i was running out of uh, uh tax deduction deductions that i could actually take right because that, that tends to happen when you go on a comedy it's 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 such a it's such a problem and i had to keep my income down so i had to you know kind of walk away so danny a lot of write um tell, yeah yeah tell, tell us tell how is it how is it making 
comedy and being a magician, how do you make that a career? <laughs> hey, that's funny. Uh, yeah. Yeah. He, he, I think it's with, with anything, um, any type of entrepreneur, any type of own business. A lot of people are terrified to do their own thing because they like that comfort of having a nine to five, showing yep. up, being a heartbeat. Basically, you can show up to your nine to five job and you're literally, you could just be a mannequin for eight hours and you get that paycheck. You got that sick day. It, you, you like that stuff, that, that security, you know? Mm. Um, I think in order to be a full time uh, anything, you know, you got to hustle. Um, you've got to, like, in, I don't eat if I don't get booked. I don't pay mm. my bills if I don't get booked. So, you know, you have to look at it from, from that point of view, too, you know. So you, you, the career can happen. You just got to be, uh, you know, it's either s swim or drown type of thing. And mm. but, but I will say this, you know, it, nothing against anybody with a 9-to-5 job or anything like that. But you think you're secure in your 9-to-5 job, but realistically, fellas, you're not. You're, uh, you, you're, you're a bolt. You're a screw. And when you wear out, they're going to replace you with another one. Um, just to, if you're hopefully you guys are smart enough to take advantage of the time you got to make as much money as you can. And uh, when they come to screw you, you know, be ready to screw them. I like where this is going. So yeah. that's, yeah. That's, that's kind of my, my point. But take it. it can hey, be done. Take them down. It, it can that's definitely great. be done, man. Yeah, you got to hustle is, is what you're saying. It's just that you're and constantly. That was my, older, that was. That's my experience as a freelancer. I've I've worked a few full time jobs in my life, and I would always get screwed over when I was fired. But when I was freelance and had you know five or ten clients, or you know was kind of master my own domain, uh, not to steal that from Seinfeld, um, it was uh, a different story because I never went hungry. I was always kind of like working Absolutely. on this and that and the other. I'm out. Uh, No, that's, 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 that, no, no, no. That's what Kramer did. Like he was, oh. he, he was in the, in the campaign and, or in the, the contest. And then next yeah. scene, he, was, oh, yeah, he, yeah, out, he said, funny. I'm out. Yeah, he's out. He's out. <laughs> that's correct. The, uh, well, I mean, you know, like I said, though, but, and, and I get people who, you know, don't want to give up their nine to five or the career or, you know, or these things, but, uh, you know, to, to make a career in entertainment, it is tough. Um, you, you learn a lot of things. You, your goal as an entertainer, you don't want to wind up being an old, bitter man, an old, bitter woman. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it can definitely happen because you see, uh, I mean, you see you see opportunities given not on the merit of talent, okay? Just to be completely honest with you, you know, there's uh, people that get opportunities and it, it, show business don't have anything to do with talent. Um, despite what people may think, it, it doesn't. And, uh, and, I mean, and it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're in uh, in front of the camera, behind the camera. It doesn't matter. Exactly. So uh, there's just there's realities you got to accept, and you just got to roll with it. And but I mean, one thing I will say, I'm lucky that I live in a day and age to where um, there are gatekeeping, and there are people that's going to be like, you know, screw your dreams. But then there's also an opportunity due to stuff like what we're doing right now where you can still put your garbage out there. You can still put mm. your work out there and uh, no one can really tell you no. You know, they can shit on it all day long. You know, like yeah. I said, little Good. Timmy can call your mama a whore. <laughs> but uh, the uh, it, but at the end of the day, you know, you can you can put your work out there. And you, so it's up to you, basically in show business how much you know if you want to make it work or not um, can i, can I the, take the oh go ahead let me let me do the chat really quick you do it so we got buck mud and soupy on the chat right Super now jones uh, I love you. uh buck mud says let's see what is <laughs> he says i really hope that the dude and the cab driver were just amateur actors uh from my story to be fair <laughs> nine-year-olds calling my mama a whore is pretty funny <laughs> That's very funny, by the way. <laughs> it's says, disturbing. Uh, I mean, says, when when they start talking about sex to you, like I've I've sat next to some nine year olds that were not my kids or related, and just 
on a job and they'll just unload some shit about sexuality and it's really it's it's probably about as uncomfortable like adults you know can't make me feel that uncomfortable do you know what's nuts these days this is so uh, crazy is like a lot of the kids younger kids is they're they're more aware about sexuality than what sure. i believe we were I, I mean you know i had no clue you know and it's just it's like what did my daughter tell me uh Dude, I don't even know the name of it. I can't even pronounce it. She was talking about one of her friends, and they identify as this. And I'm like, well, what the hell's that? And then she told me, I was like, wasn't well, that bisexual? No, not really, Dad. You know, and I'm like, what? You know, so I can't keep up with all of them, but it just blows me away. You know, I was like, when I was your age, you know, I was, that was, I wanted, I wanted to get high. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, what's going on? So. <clears throat> It's because we were bored a lot. I don't know. I grew up in the 80s. I remember Absolutely, being bored. Kids don't get to be bored anymore. That's not a luxury that, that and, and they let have. Let me say this. I got to say that you are absolutely correct. And here's the thing. that That is sad that kids aren't bored no more. It's sad that no one is because we have a cure for boredom right away. You know? And as soon as we get bored, we've got a phone, a screen in our face, and we can watch another video. It's this. And this is what sucks about not being bored anymore. Boredom is the number one recipe to creativity. And, you know, I, I just, I, I know I sound like the old man griping here, but I'm afraid of art, creative art. No, no, you're right. Necessity breeds yeah. innovation. So if you are bored, you have to, for example, if you were an only child or if you were a child that everyone else was a different age or whatever, for example, I, you know, I have got, I've got an older brother, but there was a period of my life that my older brother was, he's the older brother. Like, you know, he's got his own friends and I'm like some fuck off eight, nine, 10, 12 year old. You know, you, if you're 18, 19 years old, you want to hang out with your 11, yeah. 12 year old brother, right? But what that occurred or what, what that caused to occur was I am never bored ever. Why? Because within me, I will I will have something to do. Um, by the way, Soupy says hi, Danny. What's up, Soupy? Um, and Buck Mud said Holker is just like Andy Kaufman in that regard. He said the one that he saw in person was brilliant. Dude, that and is it was one of the it, highest compliments of all time, brother. Dude, Ho Holker, Holker's got something going on. Although, although. Well, I will, I will not out Holker too much. The <laughs> nine to five, man, uh, I understand that very well. Um, I had a nine to five for about 13 and a half minutes. And <laughs> I, you know, I was making a little bit of money and it was good. And when I told Holker that I was going to go back to China, he gave me this look, Holker. That was the look. And, uh, and he was like, why are you doing this? You finally like accomplished something with things. And I was like, yeah, but I got to go. I got stuff to do. So I went and fucked off to China again and then decided to become an actor, which is. So that's what you're doing in L.A. You're an actor. That's what I'm doing in L.A. Actually, I'm podcasting a lot. And oh, uh, and I am. I'm, I'm acting, but we're not talking about me. <laughs> My point is uh, the idea of making your own whatever you know instead of just getting someone else rich diving Absolutely. head first or As lloyd or, kaufman said make your own damn movie that at the same time people that are doing the nine to five and hulker tell me where i'm wrong here i don't know if it's the safe route i think what it is is they're investing in something else i agree that's what i, I think that's a very that's a very well said. If you're doing I think the there's a... Good. If you're doing the nine to five and your plan is to grow as as in terms of your skill sets, uh and 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 to just be in a much better position, I think it's 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 not a bad thing. Uh, it, it's I think the, the issue is, is where uh people become complacent. And I think that, the, like you said, Danny, that uh, 
I think people who are who just think the job is always going to be there and have no backup plan and and they're not they're not they're not like a little scared. Yeah, they'll, there's a good chance they'll end up one day and uh, out on their ass and and they'll have to make something happen and it, it won't be easy. Uh, but for people who don't see it that way, uh, who will have, I guess, a backup plan or or is willing to uh, maybe not jump ship, but is is prepared is prepared for the worst. Okay, that's. I think they'll be fine. I think those people. Not, you, know, no, you should always do that. You know, you should always prepare for. Because I mean, you know, you, you know how shitty human beings are. You know, well, that's who run that that that's who run companies. You know that that's you know that that's who you do, do these things. So, you know, the the I always get a kick out of the company man. You know that guy, those, those people, and I'm like, bless your heart. You know, you know, at less than two years after you retire, you know, Debbie, no one's gonna remember Debbie. You. No one, you know. Poor Debbie. Uh, Debbie. No one um, gives a shit. Well, I've got I've got but two th things to say. Th I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Two things to say. Ken, go ahead. Um, they're accomplishing something. Uh, whereas you know these co corporate conglomerates and stuff like that. There is a, there is an accomplishment as a team and as a massive group. You know, America was built off of factories and off of, you know, big, huge. You don't do the big, huge endeavors as a comedian. And this, I'm going to hit you a little bit. Is there artistic guilt for not being, do you have that? Because I know that Bill and I have talked about this before, but do you ever have a guilt or an issue? And how do you overcome that if you do? What do you mean, uh, artistic guilt towards? I mean, uh, well, if you if if you feel like you're not participating, this is like this is like dad talking. If you're not accomplishing, like the next innovation or the oh, next, of course, of course, there's a. Uh, I mean, that's with anything you do, you know. I mean, because uh, it's it's almost like. Well, I mean, I I'm gonna I'm not gonna lie to you, you know. I think about all the time ten years from now. Am I going to be able to do this? You know, mm. 10 years from now, am I going to be able to drive all over the place? Am I going to want to feel like, um, you know, when, when you get, if you've got a show Saturday night at 8 o'clock and you feel like shit or you've had a bad day, well, dude, too bad. You know, you get up there and you turn it on and you're the dancing monkey, you know? Um, do Am I going to want to feel like doing that when I'm 60? And am I smart enough to put my own money back for savings? You know, I don't mm. have a 401k, you know, uh, so. You could uh, have a Roth IRA though. I'm just. Absolutely. absolutely. Well, you know, that that's the whole thing. With, you know, I've got some royalties that I'm treating like a retirement plan, you know. Which you should. But, Good. But a lot of people, a lot of people don't think that way. So, and I mean, yeah, there, there is that guilt, you know. Yeah, I mean, there, there is times because I, I think, um. There's a lot of fantastic comics entertainers that we've never heard of that were amazing. But they died sleeping on a couch somewhere or homeless or in a hotel room. That was their yeah. sacrifice, baby. I'm just. And you're, you know what? That's exactly right. <laughs> but it, it, it exactly you know what it is. I had a, I had a couple jokes, but whatever, it doesn't matter. It had to do with <laughs> I, I ruined your and... jokes. They were really good. They were really good anyway. I didn't. I didn't want you to move forward. So th that leads I, I, me to Ben. I don't move forward. <laughs> I didn't want. No, I mean that's. I didn't want you. To, if you succeed before I do, you know. <laughs> Snoopy <laughs> says, "Job security is a myth." I've heard that changing jobs every two to three years is the way to go. What do you guys think about that? That's Always what on they the do hunt. Nowadays, that's what they do. Yeah. A lot of people do that these days. You know, they're you gotta you, you gotta find a new job before you're fired. You, you get that job, you look for another one. That becomes another resume line item that gets you into the next one because the AI they look at your resume and they know. Uh, speaking of finding another job, did we talk about this? Like, how do you get your jobs? Like, are you calling? Are you calling clubs? Are you on? Do you have an agent? Well, yeah, I work through. I work with some agencies. Um, also, I, uh, you know, you send emails. You're constantly sending emails out to venues. Um, I get a lot of corporate 
uh, a lot of private man i do a lot of private shows too you know that's yeah. that's where what was it at. like what was it like uh working for the baked bean company i mean that was oh oh something. oh fantastic man the uh bush's baked beans yeah bush's baked beans. that was great the um you know what was interesting when they, they booked me for that they put me in the original uh bush's home okay they, they've got that set up for guests that they stay in it you know and uh first of all you talk about haunted yeah that bitch is haunted but uh <laughs> it uh it was wonderful no man it was wonderful we stayed in the bush home and you know i i, I did three shows out there for them fantastic fantastic crowd uh, did they make you any beans what, what, Hey, Bowling Green, you what the fuck you all in. talking about? Bush what? I mean, did you eat, did they give you some baked beans to eat? What in like, God's name are you talking about? Bush's Baked Beans, uh, corporate corporate gig, corporate show I did for Bush's. Corporate Bush's gigs guy. are great. I mean, that's the way to hey, do it. Bush, talking were they, dogs. Were they wearing suits? I think some of them, you know, hell. But yeah. it, my, I was there for the employees, you know. They're, they're, so, they're a bean company and they wear suits. <laughs> Dude, absolutely. It just, it was weird. But I will say, hey, I will say this, dude. It had the most rancid smell. Oh yeah. It, which was ironic. But yeah, it is. Uh, it's appropriate. I don't know <laughs> what the damn smell is, but um, it really reminded me of the um, here in bourbon country. You know, it reminded me yeah. of like one of those those bourbon places. Where if you get too close, it's got that weird. Oh, those are great. I mean, I love bad. it. It's I used to, like Cheerios to me. I used to rent an apartment down by the river in Frankfurt. And I used to smell, uh, smell uh, bourbon or, or whatever it is they were cooking up. On the Kentucky on... River is like seventy-five percent bourbon. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. pretty. Don't sure. drink the water; it'll it's it'll kill you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> that's the Kentucky River. That's good. Yeah, Tennessee yeah. River is is seventy-five percent hepatitis. That's right. Yeah, it's yeah. because it comes True. out of Kentucky. <laughs> anyway, um. <laughs> Right, so what we were talking about, um, ghosts. We went from ghosts, we went everywhere. Yeah, but the reason that Hulker jumped in, all right, is because I messaged him. He was like, hey, I might be on, he, this is not how Hulker talks. Uh, he's, he Love said, hey, I might, be, <laughs> I'm not going to do Hulker in front of Hulker. He said, hey, <laughs> I might jump on. And I was like, well, this dude, Danny, He's the host of Beyond the Tinfoil Hat, which can be found on Spotify. It's Spotify. Uh, we stream live on YouTube, and actually, we haven't announced it yet, but I just got word that we're moving to uh, 6 p.m. on Tuesdays. On, on 6 p.m. On, on Tuesdays. Does, uh, does it stream directly into the consciousness of a select listener who... <laughs> takes these messages very personally and realizes that he might also be talking straight uh, directly to God. Possibly. Absolutely. Uh, I, you know, I will, t you guys want to hear a crazy one real quick. We want to hear it. This happened last episode and you guys can go watch this episode if you want to. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, I had a guy on, Oh, what was his name? Damn it, dude. I'm sorry. I apologize. I can't That's remember the name. That's a wild name. But, nice. uh, he called this upside vision is what he calls it. And basically he, he, he sees like images like holograms and he sees things from the, that hasn't happened yet. If you want to call it psychic phenomena, that's that 4d but shit, it. man. But he, he, he's been like, they've actually studied him at the ions Academy and you know, they've done a lot of testing on him and stuff. This is the, that's a place where they government, the government funds these things. So the guy's got some legitimacy, you know, he's not just some crackpot. You know. Yeah. Is it is it Tom Matt? Yes. Yes, Tom Matt. Is he the dude right. who like? Is he British? No, 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 no. Good, good. He's not uh, Canadian, is he? No, no, no. Yeah. No, he's not Canadian either. Actually, you know what? Tom Matt. I think he's in Georgia, so he's not too far at all. Okay. Um, but uh, this was interesting, and I had I didn't even tell him this. I haven't even told him this. But this was last week, and before we got off the show, I said, Tom, when was the last? upside vision you i mean or you know that you did he goes well hell i can do one right now and i said well let's do it you know let's do oh. it right now this would be great oh. and uh this is what he says he goes okay i don't know what this means it makes no sense to me but i'm seeing a guy in a bowling alley he's getting he's getting the bowling ball he, he's 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 bowling and it's a gutter ball he goes I, he starts laughing he goes i don't know what that means 
but this might have some type of correlation to somebody watching you just give it a few days you'll see i don't know well you know i didn't think nothing of it once again i, I made the big lebowski you know yeah. like boom yeah, it's yeah. one of my favorite movies why um, not well then this though tell me tell me you guys opinion on this what do you think so you know i'm doing the old social media thing where i'm having to post my show and where was i last weekend fucking bowling green bowling green bowling. where am i now bowling green yeah Got bowling it. green so i uh i just i, I saw I, I thought of it and i was like well that's that's interesting Coincidental. Now, let's be honest yeah let's be honest he could have googled me before the show and he could have saw where i was going to be that's that could be that's rational thinking 101 or he uh did you yeah. bomb? What's that? No. Did you bomb? No, 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 no. Well, that's not a, a gutter. Fantastic. It was a great show. It was a well. This is this is the only thing that I can I can correlate with that is, and I mean I'm kind of reaching here too. I'm reaching here, but Bowling Green was he thinking like green as not no good, you know, uh, as being mm -hmm. new to something, mm -hmm. you know? I, I, I don't know. As you're just saying, well, you know, uh, Ken. Yeah, I mean, Bowling Green came from like the idea of like they, I guess they had a flat area and it was grass, but they didn't have bowling alleys at the time and they just bowled on the grass. I don't know. On the grass. That's how they did it. Uh, Holker, maybe, that, any it's, thoughts? It's, <laughs> maybe that's it. <laughs> uh, I did, I did, I, I would like to add to your bowling story. Um, I, uh, one of, one of our care, caretakers, uh, nephews, uh, is a bowling professional like he's like a 16 year old who's like number nine and bowls like a 270 or something like that really like, really God. good so anyone who knows <laughs> 300 is perfect yeah so uh that that was a story that i had last week i mean how often do people like, they bowl bowling is a big deal bowling for know. weekend you know Poker. i do want to I, I do want to talk about a technique, you know, bring it back to kind of like magic here for a moment. Yeah, sure. Yeah, do it. Uh, uh, Tom, like I said, he was a great guest. Uh, there, there's there's three things here. Possibly he could be full of shit and he could have Googled me and it just made up that story. Okay, I, I don't want to think that, but let's, let's put everything out there. Uh, two, he could be the real deal and he nailed it and didn't realize he nailed it. Okay. Or three, he could have been telling me exactly what he saw, and it may not have nothing to do with me. I was just, you know, looking for something to connect with, you know. Um, but I will say this, okay, and this is in the land of magic and mentalism. Um, there's a technique that, um, and not to expose anything, but there's a technique in mentalism to where it's the 80% rule. It's to where you they, they don't get it 100% right, but they get 80% of it right, and then they let you do the rest of the homework. Mm. And when that happens, that makes the experience more powerful on your end. Okay, right, now they did it. Absolutely, absolutely. So I'm thinking, I, I'm and I and, and by me saying Tom did that, I think I'm giving him way too much credit because that's some. Um, that's some master degree level mentalism stuff, you know. It's not mm. that, you know, it's not your average day YouTube Google trick magic trick. Right. So, um, and but with the the bowling vision and then the bowling green is kind of, you know, he threw eighty percent out there and I had to put the rest together. Yeah. So it's a lot of a lot of synchronicity. It is. It is but it, to to say anything, like I said before, the most I can say was that's interesting. Yeah. I, I dated this girl from Germany who, uh, in the early aughts, my That's prior roommate, magic, bro, both of you. Yeah. Go forth, go forth. I, I, my, my roommate prior to, uh, he, he moved to Germany. He was in the, and, and the army, or he was in the tank division and he dated the same girl in Germany, tank my college girls. roommate. <laughs> and so like, but we didn't we didn't know this. I was like making a joke. Oh, did you know this guy? And she was like, Yeah, I dated him. I was like, uh, 
no and then it turns out it's the same guy and it, it's just like small world then, like things happen oh that's a bit right there that's a bit right there you, there's funny <laughs> tank bros right there there's funny <laughs> we were definitely tank. but but you know never i mean now that you said that oh, oh my god you've, you've made this world even smaller to me because like okay this is a long time ago a long time ago but there's syn synchronicity in this world. And I, I'm sure as you travel as a comedian from place to place, you run into a lot of people and things and places that can take you around in this weird circle. Absolutely. Like two is Waffle that, Is that <laughs> two Waffle Houses? <laughs> two Waffle Houses. I'm seeing, I'm seeing two waffle houses Dude, if he would have said that holy hell can you imagine mirrored side You're by right. side i would have lost I mean, my damn mind <laughs> that's real i mean we we've joked about those waffle houses when when you told that joke i was like yeah been waffle there. House is bomb. for <laughs> one year for my birthday holker gifted me a waffle house mug damn and it is glorious i love it I the love the sink is hulk the, the synchronicity He's in, he's in. Holker is the bowling alley. <laughs> the synchronicity about the Waffle House is Bill loves Waffle House. That's yeah. his favorite. It's not my favorite. I do like so it. So you got us both. That's his favorite restaurant. He's he's in pain not being there right now. It's it's pretty rough. I've been going to Denny's and listen, I like Denny's, but Denny's is not the same. It's not the same. It's not the same. Uh, let's take a short. Let's take a five minute break, right? All right. Get some water. We'll a, refill the bourbon. You want to do a ten minute break? I mean, uh, that, uh, we'll tell a you. ten is good. Five. I I I am running a little close on time here. How much time you got? I man? think. Uh, so I mean, are you guys doing a five or 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 ten? What do you want to do? I mean, we can do a ten. We can do a five. Or we could keep going. We could just keep going if you're ready to keep going. Hulk and I can just manage it. True. Well, I mean, you know, I, realistically, I probably got about 10 more minutes and I, I do. All right. It. You guys continue. I'm going to go pee. And He's gonna... uh, we... <laughs> I'll be right back. Go pee. Go pee. Uh, so. Uh, we were talking about um, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of depression. Um, oh, yeah. Does does. Uh, depression does comedy get you out of depression do you exploit it uh, do you have depression uh, do all comics have depression I think uh, I think most of your comics do uh, yeah I, it, 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 it is a real thing um, from from pain is where, where, where you pull your humor most of the times I don't care who you are there's not a comic that ain't that if you've had a if you had an amazing childhood you're not going to be a comic, so <laughs> the uh, if if you if everything was perfect as a child, you know, nah, you're probably not going to be a comic. You're going to be a maybe a CEO or something, but you know, you're not you're not going to be a comic. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think it, it's just a coping cop, coping mechanism that that most of us learn as children of how to deal with those things, and it you know, eventually it you know it comes out. Uh, the um but i mean I, I would i say i'm a depressed person now i don't think i i walk around not knowing while i'm de while i'm depressed you know what i mean <clears throat> um but uh, my creativity writing jokes humor that is a way to uh to to, to cope and, and shield with stuff like that yeah and so do you do you think you're better off like emotionally because of comedy because of doing this or do oh, you think yeah. if you didn't do comedy is it or do you supplement into comedy basically well i i think it, it, it uh, definitely better off if, if i didn't have this and luckily i do have an amazing family now i am blessed to have an amazing wife and and, and, and wonderful children uh but if it was just me uh, and and i and i didn't do this you know i don't know you know we, we don't know where i'd be and do you think do you think that um you know kids with depression do you think it's a thing that that maybe they should have in schools or something like that to where like they well, get up in front of a 
a group and do this sort of thing as 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 maybe a whatever it is the kids do a club or something like that I think it's great and you know like um I, I make my well I, my son was in maskers okay mm -hmm. uh the the you know in acting he he was and did plays and he was wonderful he's super talented in it and uh you know I hope my daughter does the same thing um because I think um anytime that you can get in front of an audience and 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 perform in any ways it gives you this level of self-confidence that I don't think you can get anywhere else you know and it's also a skill that you can take with you the rest of your life. You know, even if you do want to go to that nine to five job, you've got this this skill, you know, you've got these things. So I think it, it I think it would be great if they taught more of performing arts, you know, and, and how to deal with these situations. You know what I mean? To, to, to find the humor and things. And, you know, we say it all the time, uh, you know, people will, um, you know, they say punch up, don't punch down, you know. Um, there's nothing funny about a homeless guy, but there is, but there isn't. You know what I mean? If you've got the skill level to find that funny thing about the homeless guy, fantastic, then you're good. If you're saying it because it's going to be mean for the month, no, that's hacky, you're a douche, you know. Sure. There, there's funny in every topic, even depression, even sadness. Sure. You know? Are there any, any subjects that... Uh, comedians should not talk about like when you're no. doing a set oh, no but th there's nothing that I mean c the comedian as a whole but most comics aren't th there's some topics that most comics are not good enough to talk about you know I think Dave Chappelle is talented enough to where he can talk about anything he wants to mm -hmm. and um, I think uh, I you know I also and, and I'll say this too I think um you know, this always bugs me when uh, white people complain uh, about, you know, black people using the, the N-word, you know, and, and I'm like, for God's sakes, you know, whitey, you got everything. You have everything. Can we give them one word? Do you have to have that too? You know, but no, I mean, I think on some levels, uh, like especially black comics, black comics got a little more freedom to say a little bit more just based on the shitty history that they've had to endure in this country so you there's know? more freedom of speech the more shit you've dealt with i think so to a certain extent you know what i mean um like 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 a black woman from a war zone where absolutely. she was exploited can say anything there's nothing well, off mean, guard if I mean, she says something it is totally well, game for the most part, there's there's things that they can say. Yeah. I think that they've got more freedom to a little more freedom to say. Now, granted, there's some things you shouldn't say. If who, whatever the hell you are, and mm -hmm. you've got to be super funny to make some topics funny. You know, you got. It would probably be better if she had good timing. And timing is everything. <laughs> if you want to know the truth, too, that's that's the truth. Um, I mean, do you? Um, Okay, topic junk. Jump, jump. How how did you get a Guinness Book of World Record? That was that was a cool experience. The, uh, a few years ago, there was um, comics. I want to say it was back in 2015. Um, a comic, uh, Chad Ryden was his name, and DJ Buckley out of Nashville, Tennessee, came up with the craziest, dumbest idea in the world of having the longest running comedy show ever. So it was an ongoing comedy show of like 186 hours or something like that. that non-stop. This is a non-stop comedy show. It's almost a week. Oh, yeah, yeah, it was. Absolutely. And uh, so w we all got to participate and play a part. And this thing had to keep going, you know, and it had to, you couldn't get up there and bomb. And uh, I got to participate in that and uh, help, you know, them break the world record. So that was a super cool moment that, that you know. I got to participate and in it, but comics from everywhere were coming in to perform on that too. It was pretty badass. Where was where did that take place? It took place at the East Room in Nashville, Tennessee. Oh nice. The East Room, uh that that's a pretty uh pretty cool venue. I've been to a lot of shows there. Yeah. That's definitely yeah, so, a and vibe. It, was, it was pretty pretty cool, pretty cool experience, man. So I always and gotta toss that out there. Do you do you have any questions, Hulker? Are you uh do you have any thoughts? Uh, 
<laughs> no. <laughs> so, um, Zach Galifianakis. Love him. Um, but but you don't do that to your audience or your people. You, you mean like the, it, the cr- but like like making somebody feel uncomfortable on purpose? No, okay. My show, no, I, I that's one thing I don't do. I, I don't. My show is very interactive, though. It is very yeah. interactive. Um, and but you do uh, crowd work, or is that different? After, well, it's it's a form of crowd because you know being a comedian slash magician, I bring people up up there with me, you know. So, uh, you know, my show, I I, li- I do tell actual stand up bits, and then there's correlation. You you'll watch the show, and there'll be a callback in my show, but in disguise of a magic trick. So something amazing will happen, and then you you'll also get a callback to a joke, and you'll be like, oh, you know, and then the crowd just they get it, and they, you know, um. So, but there's times that I, uh, I I don't mess with people or embarrass them or, or hurt them. Like, there's one routine that I do. At um, I bring two people up on stage, and the audience is laughing at them. Okay, the people on stage have no clue what they're laughing at. But then at the end of the routine, the joke's on the audience. Oh, and it's wonderful. Oh, it's oh, it's gold, and and I love it. And I'm like, no, you assholes, you guys, these people are are, are are the cool ones. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, I love doing stuff like that. Um, and 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 there's times that I've brought people up, and I, I there's two people you do not ever want to bring up on stage. A, a you don't want to bring the the person's dying to come up. They're like, I want to screw you up, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, then you don't want to pick the person who's deathly afraid. Because oh, you, wow. don't want them to be in, you don't want them to be in therapy because of you, you know? Yeah. Um, uh, the only time that I ever make anybody look stupid is if they try to make me look stupid. Hecklers? And, and, uh, What's that? Yeah, hecklers. hecklers? Yeah. yeah if, if, if you get a heckler, which, oh, fuck uh, them. luckily, I don't get a whole lot. Um, I don't, but, you know, if you do, uh, you know. I'm, I'm guessing one of your shows, it's like a party. So everybody's kind of in and it's it's fun and you you don't give you probably don't give people enough time to heckle. I bet you go from one thing to another and it's just like a lot of movement. It's very awake and it's very upbeat. I mean, from the clip that I've been playing, it's just like you are moving around and putting 110. How much uh, weight do you you, do you lose every (laughs) show? You know what's hilarious, dude? This is hilarious. First of all, dude, ever since freaking COVID, man, I packed on weight and I look like a freaking ham, you know? And I'm getting older and I'm having a hard time losing this. I've got to lose weight, dude. I totally got to lose weight. But um, every time I'm on stage, I sweat my ass off, you know? And uh, I'm like, gosh, you know, if I could just, you know, if this just would, 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 would happen every day, you know? But, um, I, dude, I'm wore out. I give... And keep in mind, dude, I, I feel gross saying this, talking about myself. It's freaking disgusting, you know. But um, I give 110% when I'm up there, you know. I want people to, to have a good time. I, I It's high energy. Um, there's no sleeping at the show. You're not going to sleep at my show. And, and in most cases, you're right, though. I, I don't give people time to heckle, you know. Yeah. Um, I really, I'm trying to think of the last heckler that I... Uh, that I actually really had. Now I've had people come up and try to say something clever, you know, yeah. and then you know basically I shut them up, you know. Um, Where's like, your uh, next show? My next yep. show, I am going no, to be um, shows. I'm going to be at the Thistle and Briar, and that's Thistle actually and a Briar. Thistle and Briar. Briar. Uh, it's a. Uh, it's actually it's actually a, a, a local show. Oh, and uh, then I'm going to be at the uh, I'm going to be at 19. Is it 1901 or 1907? I'm going to jack it up, dude. I got to go read it. But um, I've actually and then, you know, I've got some private corporate. I'm going to be in Atlanta here in a few weeks. Uh, moving. How, Atlanta, how, do you drive, dude. How, 
How do you drive in Atlanta? I mean, what is your it. secret? No, nobody does. No, it's nobody. <laughs> does. What's your secret? Nobody drives in Atlanta. Watch it's Tron true. and uh, imitate. We're LA. No one drives in LA either. Yeah, uh, after, drive in LA. after 10 o'clock, they drive. Between the hours of 10 p.m. and and 4 a.m., people drive. Um, I, I beg to differ. Uh, everyone in the world, I feel like they import cars. Like here, <laughs> like like that's Teslas pretty, pop pretty. out of the goddamn ground. Like, oh, no, it's around, like hey, look a fucking Tesla. Oh my god. You, know, you you know what, man? I used to want one of those, but now I'm starting to hate them. Now you want to punch a motherfucker in the face for driving it, unless it's the Cybertruck. I you know yeah, I would love cool. a Tesla cool. in LA traffic. I would love a Tesla in LA. No, traffic. it'd be great. I'm, it'd be great. I'm not the biggest fan of Elon Musk. I don't really care. I don't want to get into I it because I know Musk. that. Go Bill yourself. loves Elon Musk, but you're whatever. a bad it doesn't person. Matter. <laughs> Not, none of this matters. Um, I want a Tesla because if I lived in LA, I would want it to do that. Like it figures out, it stays in the lanes, and and you don't have to hit. My knee would hurt because stop and go and stop and go. And I think because the people you're, in Tesla you're anxious. You gotta drive like you're from Kentucky. What happened to you? Listen, motherfucker, no, when no. I drive in LA, you, I'm like, mm, you don't. You yeah, but still, you got 2,000 RPM, motherfucker. I'm on the goddamn yeah. 101. If anybody doesn't know what the 101 is, big old fuck all highway, which I avoid <laughs> at all costs. I'm just like, mm. people are like, fuck you. And they're just like, yeah. Sending out. Fuck them. That was my, that was my, my biggest, dick. That was my biggest culture shock first time out there and seeing how people drive on the freeway. I was just like, damn, dude, this is this is it's nuts. a free for all way. All right. My Plymouth says my, no my thoughts, just Plymouth Grand. <laughs> my Plymouth Grand Voyager broke down. My alternator went out on the 10. And that was the hardest driving I ever did because the car would keep dying. But fortunately for me, the traffic would stop. <clears throat> <laughs> so if I could keep the car moving, like just a little bit i could keep the car on so that's when i learned how to like give space to the vehicles in front of me and like ease in buck well, I, traffic i don't see the point of owning a car in london <laughs> can i do this real quick someone. before yeah, i do it. Yeah, do it do it do it Let, let's do a uh i'm gonna try to do a quick magic trick for you for everybody well, All yeah right? we were gonna ask you to anyway yeah like All where's the magic participate uh, even you hulker <clears throat> or what about Soupy and Buck Mud? Although they're on like a 20 second delay. They could totally do this if they want to. I'm going to turn my head to where I, I can't see what you're doing, okay? But this is what I need to do. And this is also straight out of... I, I saw that. <laughs> this is straight This is straight off my Comedy Magic album, Dirty Tricks, okay? Uh, I'm going to turn my head, and I want you guys to hold your hands up. Hold up one of your hands right here. You got it? Yep. Okay, now this is what I want you to do. I want you to imagine have a, 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 an invisible ring on your ring finger. Okay, That's awful. Okay? Now, this is what I want you to do. I want you to remove that ring from your ring finger and place it on the finger closest to it. It can be, it can be either side. It doesn't matter. E e either finger. Just place it onto a finger closest to it. You got it? Yep. All right, cool. We're going to do it again. Uh, this time, take the ring off that finger and place it onto the finger closest to it. You got it? Yep. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to go out on a limb here, but I'm going to say that ring is not on your thumb or your pinky. So lower those two fingers. Okay. Oh, I know. <laughs> you, got it? you got it. You got it. Yeah. Okay. Now let's do it again. This time, take the ring off that finger and place it onto the finger closest to it. You got it. I go ahead and lower the two fingers that don't have a ring on it. Oh. <laughs> I'm picking up some negative energy here. Hold on. <laughs> My upside vision. <laughs> Jesus Christ. All right. There we go. I love uh, it. I, I love tell you it. what, man, guys, this has been a blast. Thank you for having me on. The uh, 
Danny, got one more question for you. One more oh, question. Go for it. Go for it. One more question. What the fuck is going on behind you? Dude, it is coming a freaking monsoon outside. Oh yeah. No, no, I'm talking about the head. <laughs> oh no, the dude, this head, is, man. This is uh have you ever seen the movie uh They Live? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh the glasses, the rowdy yeah, rowdy yeah. piper. Absolutely. Uh, they live, and then also we got our very own <laughs> Danny nice. Wits and Magic and Comedy Prank Kits. You can order from Danny Wits and Magic. There it is. There we go. Absolutely. There yeah. it is. But uh, yeah, if, uh, if if you guys, uh, you know, viewers, you guys want to hear uh, dirty tricks, it's got uh, it's got stand up on it. It's got uh, interactive magic tricks like that one right there that you can do while you listen, and uh, it's got a sketch, some original sketches oh, okay. that that I wrote. So. Uh, it's a dirty trick streaming on Spotify, Apple, everywhere. Fuck yeah! So yeah. Uh, and and we have all of your stuff on uh, on the in the description. Danny, so thank you so much for jumping on, man. Dude, this has been Danny, fun, guys. And uh, Danny, you've you know, been you've touch, been man. fun. Next time I'm in Bowling Green or Lexington or LA, when I'm out there, yeah, your Los Angeles. Oh, uh, I'll, the, uh, I'll hit you up next time. In, I'm in Knoxville for sure. Uh, yeah, dude. Hell yeah. And uh yeah, dude, anytime you guys want to come on the Tim Full Hat, hit me up. I'd love the guys to hear yeah. some, some creepy Absolutely. stories. Holger, it was a pleasure meeting you, brother. Yeah, yeah nice to meet you. If you're ever in Frankfurt, Kentucky, you know, you can stay with Holker. It's fine. Why? Why would you be there? <laughs> awesome. Man. You guys have been awesome though, dude. Seriously, great podcast, man. I love it. Thank you very much, man. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Ken, you want to lead us out, sir? Uh this lightning bolt of electricity of a podcast has been brought to you by. <laughs> it's the Geeky Gamer Podcast. The Geeky Gamer Podcast. Uh, with Danny Wilson. Uh, you can I love find the way more about him. This time. <laughs> Danny Wit Wits and Magic. <laughs> um, I, I know, I, I, I mispronounced your name. I, I realized the last time. A uh, score by all lowercase letters, Mr. Interrupt. You shit the bag, well. man. I know. Danny Whitson, magic.com. Uh, thanks to our Patreon, uh, dot com, uh, slash dreadlore members. And you too can, can be a patreon.com slash dreadlore Patreon member, just like Tim Roberts, Daniel Hulker, nostalgic Natalia Klein, Danny Whitson, magic.com. Uh, yeah, and Whitson. thanks, uh, Couchfire Media for the art and media production, as well nice, as Twa. We don't need replay to think production them anymore. We don't need to think because them they're so I don't like funny. About them. I forgot to laugh. Did I steal somebody's joke? I don't think I did. Oh, anyway, <laughs> this has been the Geeky Gamer Podcast with Danny Whitson uh, from DannyWitsonMagic.com. All right, guys. I'll see you next time. Yep. See you, man. Bye.